Welcome to Supermani. I was seeing the portfolio of uh, two, three uh, mutual funds in the BFSI sector, and there were many companies which uh, I wouldn't have ever bought them. But those funds have not done too badly, uh, which led me to think that apart from the NBFCs and banks which uh, I am holding. I can also hold a fund uh, which holds uh, some of these shares. So some of those shares are beyond reach. Some of those shares are something which I will never buy on my own. Some of the shares I could never have identified on my own. So these are the reasons why I would hold those uh, uh, funds, even though it is BFSI where I consider myself uh, reasonably uh, astute as an investor. So if I have many banks, if I have uh, NBFCs, if I have some AMC, some insurance companies, etc., etc., uh, am I better off investing in a BFSI fund? Having asked that question, same question can I ask, am I better off investing in an energy fund rather than in energy companies? Because the energy companies which I bought, I bought for a very specific reason that I was getting anything between 5 to 20 percent, repeat 20 percent dividend yield. I think at 117 rupees when I bought uh, uh, Coal India, the dividend was almost 20 rupees. So it's almost 20 percent dividend yield. Today those, uh, uh, the reasons for which I bought those shares is completely lost simply because the denominator has grown multifold. So, is it better off selling those shares, paying the taxes at 12.5% and putting money in an uh, energy fund? Why was this a uh, trigger? Is because I read a report, uh, I am not sure which uh, from where I read the report, but I read a report about some art dealers in the 19th and 20th century that they went around the countryside just buying a lot of uh, art. They just bought all the art that they could lay hands on knowing fully well that some of them would explode and some of them would do very well and all of them made fortunes they made a lot of money in buying the art in various places now i also read a report by jp morgan i think where they have analyzed the returns that the equity uh, index gave from 1980 to 2014 in the us 64 companies went fat almost 64% of the companies went fat uh, but 7% of the companies hit the ball out of the park using their own language which was enough to give them a this is a, I think the Russell 3000 where they got 50x right so in uh, 34 years if your portfolio grows up 50x uh, I think on a TRI basis you have done extremely well if so will should you put money in a fund in an index or in any of such funds knowing that 60% of the calls by the fund manager will be wrong not because he is wrong but because the fund is composed of some such shares which could go far but if he or she uh, picks up enough shares which uh, hit the ball out of the park if they pick up some 100 bagger I mean which becomes a 100 bagger in 10 years or things like that will that return be greater than the returns that you can get because if you don't get those 7 if you get uh, anything uh, out of the other 93 there is very good chance that you will underperform the index with higher stress and higher standard deviation this is a question which is very difficult for all of us to answer so whether it is investing in the overall uh, index of the country or over index of the index of the world because there is no way how you can know whether to sell in China, buy in Japan, sell in Japan, buy in China, buy in uh, Taiwan, buy in Korea, uh, maybe buy in uh, Europe or US. You don't know what to do. For example, today it is fashionable to criticize China and say in 2024 China has done very badly. Uh, of course, it has done very badly. Uh, 2000 to 2024, I think the market is down more than 50 percent and the government is doing everything that it can including arresting uh, investment bankers to stop the fall but the market is not uh, stopping but remember the growth in china is likely to be better than the whole of europe individually if you take each european country none of them will grow as fast as uh, china uh, maybe us also will not grow as fast as china given the size that china has that is really commendable
assuming even for a minute that the best three markets to invest today are uh, US, China and India for you to make those switches as to uh, how much in China, how much in US, how much in Taiwan is very difficult. So if you have a fund which goes and invests in international uh, indices. Uh, maybe replicating the MSCI index or something like that maybe you will be better off because there is no way how you know how to switch and it is also very tax inefficient if you switch so putting money in a fund which uh, invests in global uh, indices uh, just global indices it could even be a fund which switches uh, which is an actively managed global fund you could put some money there you could also put money in an actively managed uh, specialty fund. Specialty fund means focus fund. So that fund will decide when to invest in pharma, when to invest in uh, BFSI, when to invest in uh, in something else, maybe steel and metal, right? They will choose when to invest where. That is also not a bad option because these are things which is very difficult for you and me to do. Uh, do I want to name those funds and those fund houses? No. Answer is no because when they do approach me, I act very haughty and say. Uh, I will not take money for naming you. So I don't want to name them without taking money or with taking money. So I will not name them. It is for you to go and do the research. Uh, I stick to a few fund houses that I think I have said enough number of times. I can't go and retrace what I do. But there is a risk that if the fund manager is not good, he may end up or she may end up buying really bad stocks. So you have to monitor. Don't think that you can just put money in one or two uh, good uh, uh, funds and uh, go to sleep for the rest of your life. You can't. You may have to be alert to see what's happening. I have also invested in a commodity fund. Uh, here I think I'll have to name it, which is HSBC, which is giving me reasonable returns. Nothing great. But I don't think it's going to do too great uh, because over a period of time it has not done very well. But I'm there in a commodity. I wanted to be in a commodity fund in Brazil, saying when the Brazil market booms or something like that happens, I will participate. But it's an extremely small, insignificant amount of money. But I have some money there. Similarly, I have some money in a REIT fund. How can I invest in global REITs except through a fund? And that is only one fund. So go and search. There's only one global REIT fund. So I can afford to name them. It is a PGIM uh, International REIT fund. Which I think makes sense because today a 12 and a half percent tax with the dollar uh, designated return, it, it can't do too badly. And it's a good way of reducing risk in a market where the PEs are so high, at least in India. Similar comparative companies like uh, which are there in, in say South Korea or Taiwan are today much cheaper than what it is in India. Indian PE is high. So, uh, shifting from uh, lower quality to higher quality may make sense. Shifting from individual stocks to funds may make sense. Though, of course, if you are very sure that you want to put money in, say, Sun Pharma, you think it's a good buy, then you can put money in a pharma fund or a healthcare fund and buy Sun Pharma. You can put money in a BFSI fund and buy HDFC Bank, right? It does not stop you from doing that. Or you look at some BFSI fund which is uh, not so much into banking, which is into non banking uh, companies, maybe mutual funds, insurance companies, NBFCs, etc. And then you also buy HDFC Bank. That is, if you want to own HDFC Bank, that is different. My, my, I have a JFC bank bought at some ridiculous price of 40 bucks or something like that and I will continue to hold it for the rest of my life because uh, Reliance, HGFC, HUL, Colgate, Siemens, Cummins Will I ever go to zero in that answer is no. I think the lowest I'll go in terms of numbers is about 1000. Cholamandalam, Korobandal, Carborandum Universal, uh, maybe even EID Parry. Will I ever go to zero in some of these shares? Answer is no, I will not. I will continue to have them in my portfolio because I believe that uh, I've got enough returns for the rest of my life. So I will just stick to them. But will I? But do I have too much of a choice? Can I sell uh, Indigo and put it into a transportation and logistics fund? No, I don't look at. Uh, I, I am not very uh, happy with what I am seeing in transportation and logic uh, logistics fund. So I may not. But I may. After six months, I may. So that reduces the size of the portfolio reduces the standard deviation of the portfolio and may not do something dramatic with the returns but it does one thing it shifts my income from dividend which is taxed at 30 percent 
<coughs> to a capital gain which is taxed at 12 and a half percent that itself is not bad but you should not do anything stupid like this because tomorrow capital gains should go could go up to 25 percent and the differential that you are hoping for is more than lost in the amc charges right i don't need an amc to hold uh, hdfc bank and reliance for me i can do that myself so depending on what you want to do uh, all these things make sense to have some equity and some uh, uh, mutual fund uh, direct, some direct equity and some equity mutual funds and uh, in case you are worried that you that the uh, that debt is taxed at a very bad rate maybe balance advantage funds right so some balance advantage fund or multi asset fund where you let the fund manager do the asset class shifting and uh, portfolio quality shifting right so you could do all these combinations is a good thing to do in a bull market like this because when you don't know whether the pe is too high whether an industry is overpriced etc you can get out of that particular etf right thank you